Hello guys, uh, tonight we're gonna take some notes, we're gonna take some class style notes, so um, if you're just a gamer and you don't like studying and you don't like taking notes, you don't like going to college, you don't like engineering math, this video is probably not for you, because what we're gonna do is we're going to take one of my sheet of notes that I have taken, which is a little bit hard to see due to the camera angle right now, in one of my communications classes, and we're gonna transfer it to this. This is a ThinkPad Tablet 2. Um, I've had this device for a while now. It's about six months. I've been taking notes with it. I really like it. Uh, it's an Atom CP device. Therefore, it doesn't really spend, uh, it doesn't waste a whole lot of energy to do what it does. It's ridiculously thin. Uh, it has no fans. It's insanely light. It's actually smaller, thinner than an iPad. It gets better uh, battery life than an iPad. And it runs uh, Windows 8.1 right now. Although this thing comes with its own stylus, which is right here, this guy is really small. It's really, really small. After a while, it hurts your hands, and they, you know, I recommend using something that's actually full size, like this guy. This one is from my Surface Pro 2. Uh, you can use any one that you like. Amazon sells them for $15, $20. You can get a bunch of different styluses uh, to work with this thing. So uh, we'll put this thing aside. And what I'm going to do right now is. Actually, I adjusted my life a little bit better. Uh, light, not life. Life too. Should have adjusted my life too. Um, first, let's go make a new page. There is a new page. I'm gonna go to view, and I'm gonna make this thing with uh, no rules. There you go, nice and clean. And um, that's about it. Let's see, the problem is this guy right here is. There you go, it's in my way. So my hand motion is not very natural. Uh, so my handwriting is going to be a little bit worse than it normally is, but uh, I'm sure you guys can uh, uh, come up with your own conclusions for that one. So let's start. I start by zooming in. And um, we start with the, well, what's the black pen? It's a little bit thick, but it's all right. So. Information source information source. Man, my handwriting is horrible. So we have this block right here where we format and then message symbol. Right under that, I wrote. I've taken this class, by the way, four or five months ago, so I don't, I don't even know what my own notes mean. Most of them. We have m sub i. I know these are coding criteria. I goes from one to dot dot dot, and my hand is already cramped here because of the camera. Two to the k. Okay, so binary. For binary, m is two. We do know that. For quaternary. How do you spell quaternary? Quaternary. That's good. M is going to be four, and for eight airy, M is going to be yes, eight. At this point, you have an option. We're going to call this optional. You can do source encoding if you'd like. You can do encryption. These are different layers of the data protocol that you're going to be doing. Encrypt, encryption. You can do channel encoding. My handwriting is a little bit better than this guy's, seriously. And yeah, you can do multiplexing, which is another layer of uh, coding in order to lower the uh, bandwidth requirements on a channel. Multiplex. Sing. We're done with the first line. What we're going to do is we're going to put our finger and whoop, slide up. Now we got more room. So for our more room, we're going to start with the drawing. We're going to put a small Cartesian coordinate. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Trying again. We're going to put a small Cartesian coordinate system where we're going to show a data and then a little bit of a mistake right here on this uh, sine wave. 
that's going to come up like this. It's going to have that, and it's going to have that. I have no idea why we have that on our notes, but uh, we do have them. Uh, anyway, uh, this is, I guess, the I input. After this optional, we will come over here. Our U sub I will go in to pulse modulation. In this block right here, we're going to do pulse modulation. And pulse modulation is uh, apparently something like uh, this, which will go to uh, G sub I. Well, when it comes out of pulse modulation, we'll call it a G sub I, which G sub I will go into bandpass modulation. I'm going to delete this a little bit better. You can do a little better. Band pass modulation. Whatever comes out of band pass modulation, we're going to call S sub I, which is going to go to an antenna. And this is my antenna right here. Transmitter. Blah, blah, blah. It's going into infinity. On the receiver side, ah, we can take a different pen right here. On the receiver side, we're going to have an antenna. This antenna is going to take the signals that are coming from there. What's coming is S sub I hat. Why is this hat? Why isn't it S sub I? Well, you don't really need to know, but the reason is actually the, it acquired some noise as it was appearing on this, uh, as it was coming down to this antenna. So now it's S sub I hat. So it's supposed to be S sub I, but it's just S sub I and a little bit more. Probably a uh, Gaussian white noise. We're going to demodulate the signal. We're going to get G sub I hat. We're going to do detection, edge detection. We're going to figure out what the signal is, and we're going to get U sub I hat. And then we're going to do a decoding scheme, which is going to give us M sub I hat, which is the original M sub I that we generated right there. We At the receiver now, we almost have what we started with. And then we're going to format this thing, reformat it back. And that's going to go to its destination. Now, take a blue. E evaluate thing. A digital system. So, our criteria are bandwidth. Performance, data rates, we'll go back to black. So I wrote binary here for some reason, M1, M2, B, FSK, meaning binary FSK. FSK is frequency shift key, if anybody's interested. M sub, oh, not I, M sub 1, M sub 2, M sub 1, and, uh, oh, the frequency is being modulated here. So for M sub I, I have like regular, and then for M sub 1, and then for M sub 2, is like the really tight like the frequency of the signal is increased and then I slow down again for M sub 1 so whenever I detect a slow signal I know it's M sub 1 when I detect a really really fast signal I know that's M sub 2 this is T seconds I guess this is what we're calling the period over here I wrote data rate R equals one bit which is the data divided by every millisecond equals 1000 bps bits per second and that's good and then over here I wrote m2 m6 m2 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 1 0 and uh, this takes one millisecond when m equals to 8. Why? I don't know. I didn't even get an A in this class, so it's kind of normal why I don't know. Uh, I got a B. R sub S, 
which is our uh, data rate, symbol rate is one symbol now per one millisecond, which equals to 1000 symbols per second. And R is three bits per symbol now because of here. Kind of, I'm remembering things, which is 1000 symbols per second equals three kilobits per second. The whole idea of this exercise is to show that, um, oops, sorry about that, to show that uh, if you use uh, coding and you use symbols instead of actual bits to transmit data, you can use your bandwidth more efficiently and um, reach faster speeds and have better throughput. Um, now I'm done with my page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys before and after pictures type of thing. So this is what I wrote. Actually, it'll be better if I put this like that. Hold on. There we go. So this is what we get. This is what I wrote in over the last five, ten minutes. The original was, I'm going to move the camera so you guys can see, was that. So that turned into that. It's pretty neat. You can do this in class. And uh, the advantage is, look at this. Right here, I'm like, hmm, I think I made a mistake there. Whoop. Great. You know what I want? I want red because I like red. Draw. Let's get some red. There's the red. And then let's put some red right here. And we managed to do that. Now we're done doing that red for one reason or another. We're back to our thing. Anyway, um, overall, I'll put this guy back up here. Overall, this tablet is really good for note taking. And the main reason for that is that. Um, it gets 10 hours of battery life, and 10 hours of battery life is really important. I mean, I started this thing at 31%. It's down to 29 right now. Um, it's basically nothing. It sips energy. I have a Surface Pro 2 as well that I'm using for note-taking, but that thing dies within 3, 4 hours, 5 hours at the most. Um, this thing goes all day. It's really light. I throw it in my backpack. I don't even feel it. It actually has a keyboard that I can show you guys um, that I... Uh, also purchased which is right here and then you know this thing also weighs nothing and then when you combine the system it's pretty neat it's almost laptop like although it's not a laptop ta-ta key travel amazing a uh, little bit mouse right here scroll lock two buttons it's really good I like it I recommend it um, definitely get yourself one of these full-size pens and uh, good luck